welcome to my channel. Uh. Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Jennifer Agum Biaide. If you're a original subscriber, thank you for coming. Thank you for tuning in. I'm trying to say to you, I don't know what coming in means. I'm saying coming in, I don't say that. But anyway, thank you for tuning in. If this is your first time on this channel, please subscribe to this channel. The subscribe button is somewhere here. And turn on the notification bell so that you're notified whenever I post a new video. And, okay. If this is your first time on this channel, please subscribe to this channel. If you have been coming to this channel, watching videos and watching content and not subscribing, what do I do? You don't like my face? Okay, subscribe because you don't like my face. <laughs> well, this particular video, I'm just going to be sharing with you guys some tips on how to identify abusive relationships. Now, I just want you to see, I, mean, I just want to share these tips to you and I hope it gives you insight, you know, gives you an idea of what an abusive relationship is so that when you see it, pop, 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 wait, pack your bags and run. Now, everything I'm going to be saying is going to be faith-based, so, you know, of course. So, I'm going to be sharing with you guys how to identify unhealthy relationships. Some of you are in this relationship and probably don't know that it's unhealthy and unhealthy place to be. I'm just going to be sharing insight with you guys from some of my own experiences and some, some information that I've been able to gather. So, if you find you think you need these tips and you have a friend who does, please call them, come sit down, share the link with them, and let's get into the video. First thing I have here is he or she asking for he or she demanding for sex. You know this thing that I hear a lot of people tell me is like if you love me, sleep with me. I'm not celibate. I can't be celibate for a long time. Okay, you're not giving me sex, so I'm going to take sex from somewhere. Blah blah blah. All that unnecessary sexual pressure. You don't need it. That's an unhealthy relationship. Unhealth unhealthy relationship. One on one. Pack your bags and away. Oh, of course, by now, we should know that sex before marriage is a sin against God and against your body, right? So apply self-control, guy. There's nothing wrong with having to desire desire sex with your with your with your partner, with your girlfriend or your no let me not say girlfriend, but with your fiance or fiance. There's nothing wrong with trying desiring to have sex with them. It is in fact normal. If you do not desire to have sex with them, then there's a problem, right? But then apply self-control, dude, babe, apply self-control. Wait until after marriage. And sex before marriage is fornication and it is a sin. So if you find yourself in that kind of relationship where the guy is putting so much pressure on you to have sex with him and he's making you feel bad that you're not having sex with him, making you feel like you don't love him, it is an unhealthy relationship. Cheating. By now we all know that cheating is wrong, right? But then I think I've come to accept this mindset of main chick and small chops you feel like okay it's cheating yes but you're the main chick and that's okay no it's not okay it's not okay for you to be in a relationship and you're being cheated on because they call you main chick you feel like you're a madam first of all he doesn't even regard you right for him to be cheating on you he doesn't regard you he doesn't respect you babe he it is an unhealthy relationship you don't want to live with that kind of person for the rest of your life if there is a certain level of commitment then loyalty is expected it is high time as ladies we stop accepting main chick as normal it is not normal it is not okay to be the next thing i have is emotional abuse how do you identify an uh, an emotionally abusive person someone that publicly makes fun of your inadequacies and your weakness without thinking about how it makes you feel someone that does something deliberately because he wants to hurt you for instance he knows or she knows that this thing she's about to do is going to hurt you to the core and yet does it because she wants to hurt you or because he wants to hurt you that is an emotionally abusive person somebody that makes fun of your interests to deliberately make you second guess yourself and your choices you like football for instance and the person is making fun of football as in football what <laughs> You know those kind of comments i don't know that's how much i can explain or you're interested in makeup and just like Abeki, forget that thing what is that makeup nonsense okay and he knows that it's something or she knows that it's something you really really care about something you're passionate about but yet chooses to make fun of them so that it makes you feel less of a person and you begin to second guess your choices you begin to think like okay maybe your choices are not adequate enough and a verbally, a verbally abusive a verbally abusive relationship how do you know that the relationship you're in is a verbally abusive one is almost intertwined with emotional abuse anyway one because of course the abuse is from the mouth and the emotions is what receives it right one makes jokes 
makes a joke of your weakness. He knows that you cannot cook. And this is not deliberate. Maybe you were never thought or you were never experienced it. And this person is always making a joke of it. Making laughing at you. Making fun of you in a derogatory manner. You get my point. Somebody that makes you the center of their joke. And they clearly see that you are not happy about it. Yet they continue to make that joke. Yeah, you buy in public. They are saying, oh, this person, look at her makeup. Ha 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 ha, look at her shoe. Ha ha, look at his dress. Look at the way he wears his shirt. And he's seeing, or she's seeing that you're being sensitive, or you're not happy about it, or you're being insecure about it. And they keep they keep doing that. Somebody that screams at you in a way to make you submissive screams at you to show that the person is head you know how you know how they say okay so men you know that you show headship and authority they are always screaming at you shouting at you to bring you to a place of submission that is a verbally abusive relationship just in case you find yourself in any of this just know that it's not a healthy place to be and if you're a married person you're already in it just pray that god will help you god will change your spouse just begin to engage God and the Holy Spirit will begin to open your eyes to see what you also need to change. Because one thing I've learned about the Holy Spirit is that once you come to him complaining about another person, the first person he deals with is you. If you say this, the first address, the first thing they will deal with is your own makeup, your own conditioning. That is, they now when they're done with you, you will now begin to see that the other person is changing, the other person is changing naturally. Like the Bible says, when your obedience is complete, you will punish every disobedience. Baby, one tip I'm going to be sharing is a physically abusive relationship. I don't care how many times you have to say this. There are women that are still in physically abusive relationships and are not leaving and are finding it okay. Or I don't know why they're still there. Maybe they feel like they're in love with the person. They feel like there's going to be they're going to be stigmatized and all of that. In case you're a single girl, eh, please take note of all the things that I've mentioned. I'm going to actively scan through your the guys around you or the girls around you for a single guy to check out for these things these things are real first of all i you should pray about the person you're going to be marrying very key very very key because you really don't even know people these people that are already even in abusive relationships and on on, on all sorts of relationships are innocent people they just fell in love and they got married they didn't know that the person was going to be like that so why don't you just save yourself the stress? Pray about it so that God will direct you alright, so that you end up with the right person for you. The next thing is the person being too clingy. Now, if you notice that most of the tips I've shared, they have to do with married, single. I'm just talking about relationships in general. It could be married relationship, it could be a single boy girlfriend, girlfriend boyfriend relationship. The next thing I'm saying is he's too clingy, she's too clingy, they are touchy, touchy. They're just too touchy. They can't talk to you without having to touch your waist, touch your body, especially for singles. This is key for singles. You're with a girl and the girl is too touchy. She's touching areas that she's not supposed to touch that is making you, raising, rising your senses in a particular kind of way. It's an unhealthy relationship, especially for you as a Christian. You want to secure that your Holy Ghost relationship. Let the grace of God help you to be able to make the right decision in Jesus' name. She, he is too clingy. There are guys that are like that. They cannot talk to you without touching you. Without putting your hand, your hand on your shoulder. Touching your boobs. Touching your face. Okay, the next thing he's going to ask for, she's going to ask for his sex. Guys, that's all I have for this particular video. And I hope you really find it, found, I hope you found it really helpful. I hope you have been able to see light. I hope you've received light into some questions that maybe you've had or some relationships that you have seen and you just don't want to make the same mistake or you don't want to go into the same, you know, you don't want to fall into the ditch or into the wrong hand. I hope this really, really helps you and inspires you to make, to take action for your life. On that note, I'll see you guys in my next video. <laughs> I'll see you guys in my next video. 